So we need to be more authentic with each other. Whole life, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Christ, Jesus, the great physician. And he was healed and it's, now. It's really time to reconnect with your family. It's all about life, health, and healing hope. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Healing Hope from the Kettering Health Network. Today's show is about reaching out to those who are in desperate need, people all around the world who don't have access to medical care. Dr. Steve Schmidt will share with us his experiences as a medical missionary and how important this work is in changing the lives of care receivers and caregivers alike and later we'll get some insights for healthier living. But first, here's Lonnie Meloshenko and Dr. Becky Wong. Welcome again to Healing Hope. I'm so glad you've joined our broadcast. And my co-host, Dr. Rebecca Wong, thank you for being right here today too. It's always good to be here with you, Lonnie. Now, when we talk about marrying medicine, ministry, and mission, there is no greater missionary ever in the history of the universe than our Lord Himself. You're right, Lonnie, and you know what? He was a medical missionary. Jesus did far more healing than he did preaching or teaching. So missionary work is very popular among people today, especially in, in our country and in Canada. Young people particularly go overseas on uh, missionary trips for sometimes a full year. A student missionary will go or individuals go for a week, and uh, they never are the same when they come back. And Lonnie, there is a little controversy about Instead of being a full-time missionary who goes for five years, six years, do these short-term mission trips really make a difference? Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you from personal experience, I've taken two of my sons. It changes not only the lives of the people that we go to help, it changes our lives too. They came back never more taking for granted hot showers. <laughs> That's right. Easy to buy food at the supermarket and just all the things that we take for granted here in America. Now you've been to a number of unusual places in the world. You've been to Nepal and uh, Mexico. I've been to Africa and uh, China. People may think of going out to huts when you go on a mission trip, but we also go out sometimes, send our teams of doctors to hospitals in Africa. And how is that a mission trip? Can't people there already get care in these facilities? Well, of course people can get care, and in some countries, in some, even parts of Africa, they have highly specialized hospitals. But for the most part, what the mission team brings is special equipment and supplies that they don't have access to there. And more importantly, the expertise to do reconstructive surgery for children who might wait years in their own country to have a cleft palate repaired so they can eat normally. So, in other words, much of the medicine over there might be very, very basic simply because of the supplies and the facilities and the education of the doctors. Yes, Lonnie, and I want to tell our viewers today about a very special guest that we have, Dr. Steve Schmidt. Lonnie spoke with him recently. He's a plastic surgeon here in the Dayton area who leads medical mission teams to countries across South America and Africa. He has some terrific insight into what makes these mission trips worthwhile. Dr. Schmidt, thank you very much for joining us here on Healing Hope. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You come from a long lineage, really, of missionary doctors. You've made a lot of missionary trips in your life. How did you get started with all of these mission trips? Well, um, my, my mother was born in the mission field in Peru. My grandfather was a missionary all over South Central America. So uh, that was something that I would hear the stories and my grandpa sh shot video, or it was eight millimeter and 16 millimeter that we watched when I was growing up. And I was always mesmerized by the images of him pulling teeth in, in uh, along the Amazon or at Lake Titicaca or uh, the things that he did. I, I, I have a photo of him um, on a motorcycle on a balsa raft on Lake Titicaca and it looks like he's Indiana Jones. So th these were your heroes? It, he was. Hollywood he was, was nothing. This is it. No, it was, it was real life. It was real life and um, and he, the stories that he told, uh, it's just, it's incredible and I always dreamed that someday that's what I'm going to do. And you're a surgeon today as a result of 
those early images. Absolutely. And it took some time to be able to to um, get established and then to be able to develop uh, relationships that then I could go. And initially I was invited to go um, with others and I went one time with another group and then the next year I led my own small group. You were hooked. Six people. Wow. And then the next year 11 people and then the next year 30 and it's been... Well, now tell me about this organization. It's developed, it's grown, Legacy of Healing. Why did you choose that name? Well, we chose Legacy of Healing because, well, um, it's in the genes, yes. and, and, and it's been uh, my grandfather uh, and my mother uh, growing up in South America, and then my father has also done uh, mission trips primarily to Mexico, and, uh, and, and then it was uh, the nucleus of our group is my mom, my brother, my sister, and I uh, taking groups to different parts of the world, and so we, we thought we're wanting to continue a legacy that has actually already started. Um, and we're just following in their footsteps. And I mean, this is a voluntary thing too. You're not getting paid to go out there by some no. organization. No, no, we, uh, we are, you know, we are the, the nucleus of the organization and, and every year new people join up that, are, that have an interest in serving um, and, and taking part in something that is very, very satisfying, but it's completely self-funded and self-supporting um, where we can go to some distant land where people have a need and and do something to change as many lives we can in a, in a certain fixed period of time. Well now talk about that just a little bit. How would you describe the connection between medicine and sharing the gospel on these trips? Well I think for us it, we are interested in, in, in the healing arts but we also use as our model the work that Jesus did. And in the Bible, it talks about people who came to be healed, but in the, in the process, they were saved. They didn't necessarily always come to, for salvation. That was something that happened uh, on the way or, or, or as they were healed. And so we've sort of taken that as our model, and we want to look at all aspects of, of healing, not just physical healing. And so I think it was probably several trips down the road when we went to Peru. And Peru was a very significant trip for us because that was going to the place where my grandfather had, had oh, ministered. Wow. And when we went to Peru, we learned that as we were going to our jungle clinics, to the outlying areas, that many of the people who would come would be children and, and mothers with children. And there were long lines of individuals, and so we thought, how can we serve those people who are waiting? So we thought, we'll do uh, an evangelistic type, a, a vacation Bible school type program. A captive audience. Absolutely, they are a captive audience. They're waiting to be taken care of to have their, their health and physical needs met. And so in the process, we tried to meet their spiritual, spiritual needs. Needs. Uh, and we used a fiesta program, which is, uh, we used the Spanish language version, learning all of the songs in Spanish and telling all the stories hmm. in Spanish to that first and group. You're bilingual, of course, you could do both. Well, but I'm in the hospital. Yes. So when we do take the mission trip, I'm in the, with the hospital team doing surgery and our clinic team and our, our uh, music and worship team is there on the front lines in the clinics. It's very interesting, and I'm sure you know this, Dr. Steve, that the word for saving or the word for healing is the same word in Greek, sozo. When Jesus came to heal, he came to save. It's both. You can't separate the two. And that's one of the exciting things that makes me have goosebumps just to be talking to a Christian physician who does both and is interested in both. Now, how do you find people to join you on these trips? This is something that's not terribly difficult. It's actually kind of, well, what we would say is a God thing. The way who comes and how they come to, to find out about us and how they come to decide to go on a mission trip in the, in the first place. And many of the people, sometimes we think, oh, now what are we going to do with that kind of a physician or that type of a specialty? And then we have them and the need arises and that's exactly what we needed. We'll have more with Lonnie Meloshenko and Dr. Stephen Schmidt after this brief break. Over a century ago, a brilliant young Dayton inventor had a vision for the future. He's coming by himself! You know, this Kettering guy just might change the world. Today, that same spirit lives on at the Kettering Medical Center Network, 
bringing the best in medical technology from around the world home to Dayton. With that kind of vision for the future, what might tomorrow bring? Those guys just might change the world. You can only imagine. The Kettering Network for life. If I'm going to be a healthcare provider and if people are going to come to me and trust me, then I want to give them the best care that I possibly can. I love it. It's great. The classroom sizes are awesome. You get that personal one-on-one -on -one time, even in class. They taught well, and I learned well, and they really, truly cared. The philosophy of Kettering College of Medical Arts is such that our view of who we are as people means that when we care for others, we are doing the work of God. We are God's hands. It was just so surreal to me because I didn't ever think I had a heart problem. You know, here I was 47 and they said that, you know, I probably had about a 1% chance of making it. And I did. Kettering is known as the heart hospital and when I see Kettering, I think that's where I got my second chance and it feels like home. For more of the story, go to experiencekettering.com. Kettering for life. I knew it was serious the whole time, but it was still just unreal and you never really soaked it in. So I was hearing all this stuff and it sounded really bad. You can't even tell that she went through such a crisis because she's back to normal. They said she'll eventually feel better than she did before. So I don't think they realized that they not only saved my mom, but it helped save my family. For more of this story, go to experiencekettering.com. Kettering for life. Welcome back to Healing Hope. Now we rejoin Lonnie Meloshenko and Dr. Stephen Schmidt as they discuss medical mission work. I'm going to guess that some of the people on your team are young people, maybe even young teenagers. How does this experience influence them and affect them and impact them? Many times the people who are best served are not the people who are the patients and the individual in the country, it's the people who go and especially the, the individuals, and we don't take a lot of young people, but the individuals that go often have an interest in medicine or in ministry, and this helps to motivate them to study hard and to work, uh, do their studies faithfully, then someday this is, this is going to be them. They're going to be leading these groups. And some of them actually get catapulted into pulling teeth and actually doing things that they wouldn't be allowed to do oh, here absolutely. in the States. But oh. over there, they're needed and they do it. Absolutely. And in fact, that's part of it. Part of the fun is um, mentoring younger people and saying, okay, have you ever stitched before? Yes. I'm going to show you how. And, and I've had someone who's basically a high school teenager and they're suturing wow. in Africa. How cool is that? Oh, that is so cool. So, and then some have pulled teeth. Um, and the first people now that I've taken on trips are getting into medical school right now. And so that reacts on them then. And Jesus' words were true then. It's more blessed to give, to reach out and touch, than to receive. And, and the other thing that I would say is, when we, we took several years of trips before we took our first young person. And it changed dimensions in, again, it's, it's making a longer lasting change when you have a young person that you are mentoring and teaching, okay, when we're done doing this, this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to be leading the groups and you're going to be doing this medical mission work. And so it adds a whole new dimension. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting uh, when you have young people that are, again, the missionaries of tomorrow. Life changing. Now, how do you plan these trips? Well, it's a very long process. and. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't do it alone, um, and essentially my, my mother is the, the one who handles most of the nuts and bolts in terms of the communication with the hospitals. And, and so we'll, we'll have a series of hospitals that we have looked into, mostly Adventist hospitals, and, and we've gotten so large that we are now limited in the hospitals we can go to because they have to have, we have to be able to run at least three operating rooms. Mm. Otherwise. I'm usually taking at least five surgeons, and if I don't have at least three operating rooms, I have surgeons that are sitting around and with nothing to do. Tell us a little bit about the kinds of people that you deal with whose lives are forever changed that would have never in this lifetime had this chance, except that some dedicated Christian physicians and nurses and allied health professionals went over on their own vacation time, their own airline ticket, and you do that. That's sort of the beauty of the whole process, is some of the operations that we do are actually relatively simple. 
They don't take that much equipment. I can I can do a cleft lip with uh, one pair of scissors, a forcep, and a and a knife and a, a few stitches. It's it can fit in my pocket. Mm. It's very portable. And mm. some of the skin grafts that we do, we just don't need that much in terms of material to do something that can change somebody's life forever. Now you have a busy medical practice. You got a family. Why not just stay home and rest for the few little spots that you have? Well, I rest occasionally, but it takes us all year to collect the assets, whether it's collecting the supplies, um, uh, everything that goes into the, the things that will be utilized during the trip. Once we find where we think we're going to go, then we have to make a visit where we're going to go and look at all their, we want to make sure do they have the right cautery units, do we need to bring one, uh, the anesthesia machines, what are the assets that we need to bring that they don't have or what do we need to get there in time. So we have to assess those, those needs ahead of time and that's what makes it a little bit complicated. Once we know where we're going, then we'll be in contact with a point person, usually a physician or chief of staff, and we'll have them start collecting patients as early as possible and take digital photos of those patients and send them to us so we know what to plan for, how we can serve them the best. So many variables will come in and I know for a fact that a lot of the times the containers, a whole 18-wheeler that you sent over didn't arrive, you still went and did what you could do with what you had. Why do you stick with this, Dr. Schmidt? Uh, because there's nothing that's more satisfying. There, there. Uh, I, I was just reading an article the other day on that when you do something that helps someone else, there are places in the brain that light up, that would respond with neurochemicals that say, you know, this is a good feeling to help somebody, to make a difference, to change somebody's life forever. And and I know that these trips are short; they're they're a, a week or two, and we don't. Um, in the big picture, we really only do a small percentage of all the people in the world that need help. Mm. But the few that we do, the hundred or so that we do, those people's lives are completely changed. Mm. And, and maybe, maybe some of the, their family members or the patients themselves will have other changes in their life as a result of the evangelistic uh, outreach that we've done that may have sort of like a, a pebble in the water effect with waves that go places that we have no imagination of what they can do. You said something profound, and I hope that our listeners didn't miss that, that it's known today that what Jesus said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, has a profound impact when you do something unsolicited, they can't repay you, there is something that happens even within the human brain in terms of wellness and happiness and joy. No question about it. The people, one thing that's really fun when we take these trips is the people who've never been before. And once they take part and at the end of the trip, it's, it's amazing to, to hear them tell mm -hmm. of, of the events and, and to, to tell their family members this was incredible because it's work, it's hard. It's sometimes uh, in Africa, we didn't have any heat. There was no hot water. Uh, the power went off every day. There's all these things that you go through, and yet when people tell about it, it was the most amazing experience of their lives. Can you think of a particular patient somewhere in all of your trips? Pick one out that really made an impact on you. Well, you know, almost every trip has somebody um, that is, for me, the, the, the patient of the week. Um, when I, I know when we went to Honduras, there was an individual who he had been burned on his hands when he was young. And what happens is as you grow, in order for your fingers to stay straight, you have to release these scars and continue to have more skin grafts. And if you don't do that, eventually if it's burned on the top of the hand, it will bend all the fingers back and the fingers this will, way. will dis dislocate. Mm. And that's actually what happened with this gentleman. His fingers had dislocated right at this joint and they had folded all the way back on top of themselves and so he had two little clubs. Mm. When he saw physicians in Honduras, they had said, well, we think the best thing to do is to amputate both of your hands. So what we did is we were able to cut all the way down and cut through all the scar and release and pin all of his fingers and put in a, a skin graft. And one of the most satisfying things was they sent me a video several months later and it was him opening a jar. You know, so here, what does a man do when he's a, when he, in a country where manual labor is all that, that he has and he doesn't have any hands? Mm. And so when you can give somebody back their hands, how, how big is that? Mm. So just to be a part of that was, uh, 
it was very, it Absolutely was very satisfying. Absolutely thrilling. Dr. Steve Schmidt, Ministry of Healing, right there in your hands, following the pattern of the great physician. Thank you so much for sharing today on Healing Hope. Thank you. Stay tuned for tips for healthy living with Dr. Becky Wong and some final words from Lonnie. They actually do care about your progress. I know, when I heard that I said, yeah, okay, you know, you hear that from a lot of schools. No, really, we do care about your success. When I go home, I talk about Kettering because I've had such a great experience here. If you have a commitment to going into healthcare, you're gonna get there in a setting where you know your fellow students and where you know your teachers, and it's gonna make you someone who I think is gonna be really highly valued in the workplace. Never again just take anything, the perfect pregnancy for granted because you just never know. We were four weeks to the day early. I immediately was just like, we can't do this. We're not ready, you know, he's not ready. The special attention there was from the get-go, and so I knew he was going to be in good hands because it was their child in a sense that the comfort was just there. For more of the story, go to experiencekettering.com. He smiles all the time. He's just, you know, thriving. Loves his mommy and daddy. It was just so surreal to me because I didn't ever think I had a heart problem. You know, here I was 47, and they said that, you know, I probably had about a 1% chance of making it. And I did. Kettering is known as the heart hospital, and when I see Kettering, I think that's where I got my second chance, and it feels like home. For more of the story, go to experiencekettering.com. Kettering for life. I knew it was serious the whole time, but it was still just unreal, and you never really soaked it in. So I was hearing all this stuff, and it sounded really bad. You can't even tell that she went through such a crisis because she's back to normal. They said she'll eventually feel better than she did before. So I don't think they realize that they not only saved my mom, but it helped save my family. For more of the story, go to experiencekettering.com. Kettering for life. to get your kids attention baking soda isn't going to do it but take the baking soda and add some vinegar to it and watch what happens whoa they're going to notice that but what can happen if we mix or combine medicines some pretty powerful reactions too even though you don't see them they're going on inside your body for instance, some antidepressant medications can raise your blood pressure. So if you get a cold and take an over-the-counter cough syrup with decongestant in it, your blood pressure could rise to very high levels. According to an article in the Journal of the American Medical Association, about 2.2 million people are at risk for major drug-drug interactions. Many of the problems involve mixing prescription drugs, with over-the-counter medications, dietary supplements, or even herbs. Let's talk about a couple of examples. If you're taking the prescription blood thinner Coumadin and aspirin to prevent strokes, and you decide to take garlic supplements too, because they're good for lowering cholesterol, you might just find yourself in the emergency room because your blood gets too thin and you have a bloody nose that won't stop. The active chemical in the garlic could enhance the blood thinning properties of the Coumadin. Another good example would be the herbal extract ginkgo, which is derived from ginkgo trees, and some people take it to help their memory. If you're not taking any kind of blood thinner, you're probably fine but combine ginkgo with Plavix, Coumadin, or aspirin, and you might find that you bleed excessively when you go for a tooth extraction or simple surgery. That's why it's very important that you tell your physician and dentist all of the medicines, including over-the-counter vitamins, supplements, and even herbs that you might be taking. All it takes is two medicines to raise the risk of interactions. People over the age of 65 need to be particularly cautious because with aging, your liver and kidneys do not metabolize 
or clear the medicines away from your body very quickly. So the drug levels in your blood can build up to toxic ranges. If you're interested in more information on this topic, you might want to check out the website of the Institute for Safe Medication Practice, consumermedsafety.org. This nonprofit organization of pharmacists, nurses, and doctors is devoted entirely to safe medication practices. So be informed. Read the warnings on the medication labels. And always be sure to inform your doctor of any side effects you're experiencing as soon as possible. For Healing Hope, I'm Dr. Becky Wong. How often have you said, life is too short, time goes by so fast? A well-known country singer has a song called, Don't Blink. We blink and our babies are in kindergarten. We blink and they're teenagers. We blink and we're giving them away in marriage. We blink and they're all grown up. You know, that's why Jesus in the parable of the Ten Talents in Luke 13 reminds us we need to maximize every single day. Occupy till I come, he commands. Don't waste time. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Create a bucket list, things you propose to do this year. Show compassion to someone. You see, you are to be Jesus Christ to people. You are the light of the world. You, a sermon in shoes. Send a card to someone like your pastor. Pray for someone who just lost a loved one. Attend a school program and affirm the teacher. Call your children for no other reason than to tell them how much you love them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn, and you will be blessed. Oh, and if you really want an adventure, participate in a mission trip overseas, or make a sacrificial gift to send someone else. You'll change the lives of others for the better, and you'll never be the same, because it's all about healing hope. For Kettering Health Network, I'm Lonnie Meloshenko. <laughs>